here we are bottom of the smash mountain i had to swallow i would like to thank my patron supporters over at patreon.com slash bsm pod for continuing to support me and what i'm doing thank you thank thank you for all the lovely listeners and viewers of the podcast tuning in for another episode i appreciate y'all being here today we have seal now if you don't know who seal is you must not watch any youtube because seal comments on almost every youtube video that is related to melee content and there's enough melee content out there you might say oh i watch awesome sauce oh i watch all the podcasts that get uploaded to YouTube, like Waiting for Game, like the Austin Melee podcast, like Bottom of the Smash Mountain. Oh, I've watched the combo videos, you know, combo videos like Justice, shout outs to Justice. I see the Friends 2 trailer. I'm, I'm super excited to see that. We got all kinds of stuff, but it just keeps going and going and going and Seal finds them all. And of course, Seal is also a very good commentator, a very good player and on the podcast with me tonight. So, Seal, thank you so much for joining me. Wow, thank you. That was such a such a flattering intro. Um, yeah, definitely a bit of a uh, melee content connoisseur. You'll see me telling people that I like what they did in the comment section. That that's usually what I'm just talking about. How much I enjoyed it because um, I like to spread that positivity. Um, but yeah, also definitely out here doing commentary, competing, and. Uh, yeah, just enjoying the melee community, including commentating top eight with Larfin over at Hold That L number seven a couple weekends ago in Chicago, the biggest melee event in the history of Chicago Land, if I recall correctly. That's right. Yeah, it's it was the um, the biggest melee only one right. since technically Smash and Splash one and two were both in Illinois. Many people may have forgotten that because three, four, five were in the Wisconsin Dells. Um, but one and two were in Gurney, Illinois at the Key Lime Cove. And Smash and Splash 1 actually was my first real tournament. Um, I, I definitely had other tournaments before, but that was the first real one. <laughs> we your first that would you bit. say that was like your first big event? It was bigger than 20 people. There was like 100 people oh, in yeah. the room. Yeah. I mean, before that, it was just um, tournaments that I had with high school friends. Uh, which actually was pretty much how I got into the scene, if we want to start there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll get to hold that L7 because I want to hear about the event and how it went for you, how it commentating was and everything. But we can get to your origin story first because it starts with being born and raised in Illinois. Is that what I'm hearing? That's right. Yeah, uh, I was born here, did move away for a little bit at younger ages um, to um, Cleveland for two years and Montreal for four years, but uh, returned back here still at a young age, spent most of my life here. So definitely have the most ties uh, to the great city of Chicago. Let's go, Chicago. I'm interested in hearing how does one get into Melee when you're out in the Midwest and as, as far as I can tell, you're not someone who remembers clearly Super Smash Brothers Melee coming out day one, or are you that kind of person who remembers it coming out day one? Um, no, so I am only uh, 23 years old, so when Melee came out, I was uh, just uh, shy of three. I was, I was just shy of three, because Melee's uh, almost 21. And turning 21 in November, I'm pretty sure Melee yep. is. Um, so yeah, I was just shy of three years old. Definitely was not uh, yet playing on the GameCube. Um, however, I do have very early memories for it. Uh, my older brother received Melee for, I believe, his sixth birthday. And he's two years older than me. So um, about, I was playing it for the first time about like two years after it came out. Um, and uh, at that time, I mean, I all I did was play Mewtwo because he is the most powerful Pokemon ever. And no one in Melee can possibly beat Mewtwo in a fight. Like, it's just not possible. <laughs> How is Mario going to even get close to Mewtwo? <laughs> he turned Ash into stone. Um, anyway, that, that was what six-year-old me thought. I still think Mewtwo is uh, one of the coolest characters in Melee, even if um, he's not quite up there on the tier list. Um, but yeah, played Melee casually for many, many years. We actually never owned Brawl. Um, in, in our household so i was playing melee <laughs> casually even in like 2010 um uh yeah so I, I never really got into brawl even even when it was the the new hotness 
that would have been a natural next step for you. And we all had to play that game for hours and hours on end before we started to realize, wait a second, wait a second. This is a, the same as Melee. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> younger me younger me didn't necessarily care. I, I said, well, I don't really care for tripping. But other than that, I mean, Meta Knight's really fun to play. I'll just play Meta Knight all the time. <laughs> I did play Meta Knight in Brawl too, casually. I, I played him um, when I would go to friends' houses and they had Brawl. Um, because I mean, he's like the same with Mewtwo. Meta Knight's super cool. Um, what like what young boy doesn't like think Meta Knight's awesome? He's got bat wings. He's got a sword. He he like goes invisible when you when you press down B. Meta Knight's awesome. Um, oh yeah, the yeah. complete package of a character. Truly, truly cursed, but also blessed for for <laughs> for me being a young boy and playing Meta Knight. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then I guess moving a little bit further down the timeline. The first exposure I ever had to competitive Smash uh, indirectly was um, seeing Wombo Combo on YouTube. I didn't see it like right after it happened, but I mean, it, that was a that was a very big meme and like around like, I mean, it happened in 2009 and then it was big for a couple of years in like 2011. Um, definitely saw it sometime in that period. Didn't know why they were yelling so loud, <laughs> but it was it was a funny video. Um, and then my older brother, actually, the, the same one that, um, I only have one older brother. I have one younger brother as well, but my older brother, um, actually got interested in, um, competitive Smash as a whole before I did. So this was in like 2011 or 12, I want to say. Can't quite remember. Um, he was interested in playing Captain Falcon. And at that time, I was, uh, I played Mario just because I, I like Mario as a character. I mean, you use him as a profile picture, the the Mario trophy from Melee um, on uh, YouTube and Twitter. Um, yeah, I, I like Mario, so I, I played him then. I wasn't really competitive, though. I would just kind of, we, we would only play on FD. Um, I, I think maybe my older brother thought that was like the competitive stage. Because <laughs> he, he was just. <laughs> it's still yeah, up just, there. It's yeah, still definitely. a good stage you could play on in competitive tournaments. <laughs> yeah, and all I would really do is just spam dash attack and uh, like smash attacks. Mm. I mean, dash attacks are real easy to use. You just run at them and you press A, and Mario slides. Um, but yeah, I wasn't I wasn't super competitive or anything. And then he got Project M as well. Uh, we did actually get Brawl in like 2013. I think we might have got it just to, so my older brother could play Project M because he was interested in that. Um, so we did play Project M. I also played Mario there. Never got competitive into that. But here comes the turning point. 2014, I am a sophomore in high school. Um, and I'm uh, 15 years old. And one of my friends comes up to me and says, hey, that new Smash game came out for the Wii U. And I am going to host a tournament at my house. Would you like to come? And I'm thinking, OK, well, I love Smash Bros. Sure, I'll, I'll come by. I don't think I'm that good, um, but yeah, we showed up. We we uh, had our tournament. I played Mario in Smash Four just because I played him in Melee, and it turned out to be real good in that game too, which is pretty cool. Up till um, up till up till. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and I like beat one person and then lost, and I was like, okay, that was fun. And I thought that was it. That that was gonna be that was gonna be the end for me. I wasn't planning to go any further, but. Um, we did have a lot of fun, and one of the other people who was there said, okay, I'm, I'm hosting the next one. We're doing this again. <laughs> and so we had another Smash 4 tournament at his house, um, and it was pretty much the same for me. I wasn't super interested in competing, but he had a melee set up there as well. Well. And I, I gravitated towards that because that was the game I played the most by far. And ended up happening was outside of the Smash 4 bracket matches, me and four other people. So like one person, it was best when one person at least was playing their Smash 4 tournament match because we just play free for alls. Would play melee, and we we spent most of the night doing that while everyone else was playing Smash 4. Um, and then uh, I was like, okay, wait, <laughs> I'm enjoying melee more. I'm hosting the next tournament. And we're going to do both Smash 4 and Melee. We're going to have two brackets. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that was where things kicked off. Um, that was hosted in my parents' house in the living room. 
we had two turn we had uh two tvs set up we had the, the melee tv we had the, the smash 4 tv um and oh man i'm trying to remember the result i think i i know i either got first or second but i can't quite remember um one of my friends who played fox was uh the other competitor oh and before that actually happened i swapped to chic who i uh play to this day this was this was in uh the at, like the end of 2014 when i swapped to chic um still and, uh, uh, you actually have an even better dash attack with chic if you think about it so <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah uh, but actually, so the the reason why I I even play Sheik is pretty funny, honestly. Um, I wanted to pick up a good character because I was like, okay, Mario, he's like okay, he's not very good, but I want to be, I want to improve at this game. I want to play a good character, and I was like, okay, so my older brother plays Captain Falcon, he plays um, Marth, and he plays Fox and Falco, and my little brother plays Jigglypuff. Uh, Pikachu and Ganondorf, I think. And I was like, okay, so who who is left for me to pick? I don't want to play someone the same as them. So I'm looking at the top tiers, and I'm like, okay, there's Peach. Peach is pretty good, um, but she's kind of tricky. Like, she has a weird double jump, uh, and she's kind of slow, a bit hard to use. So who else is there? And that just left Sheik. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I literally just picked Sheik. Because neither of my brothers played her, and I wanted to play a good character that neither of them played. Um, so that was all there is to it. There wasn't any, like, me experimenting and being like, oh, I like this about this character and this about that character. No. I just I was like, okay, I'm playing Sheik, and that was that for seven and a half years now. <laughs> <laughs> for better or worse. And I would say, yeah. I would say it seems like it's going for the better. The Sheiks oh, yeah. are in full momentum right now. That's right. It's 22-2. It's, it is the year of Sheik, and Sheiks are performing. Um, but yeah, so we had that first tournament, um, and we actually continued doing those for quite a while. Uh, all my high school friends, that, that group ended up um, expanding to about like 17 people in total, so it got pretty big, pretty big at the end. Only started with like nine. Um, and we would do a melee bracket and a Smash 4 bracket. And I actually had a spreadsheet where I kept track of all the results from them. And I had like a Mario Kart style uh, point system where it would be like, it would be like in Mario Kart Wii, you'd get like 15 points for yeah. first, uh, I think it was 12 for second, etc. And so I keep track of that to see who's the best. Because we got to know who's the best. And I, I was number one in Melee um, by the end of things. I think we had like maybe eight or nine tournaments total. Um, and I, I was number one in Melee by the end of things. I won the last one. Oh, yeah, and we had, a traveling tro we had traveling trophies for both games, too. Um, so you'd have to bring them, and you'd have to hand them over if you lost. So That's and, really cool. And, yeah, I made the Melee one since I was the first one to host the Melee uh, bracket. Um, so I still have it. It's up in my room. I don't have it with me right now. I should have brought it. I could hold it up, but... Um... <laughs> well, the reason why there are no traveling trophies in Melee right now is because who would bother to bring it back? I mean, can you imagine somebody saying to Hungrybox, I need you to bring back this trophy <laughs> next year? And he'd go, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's just yeah. like... <laughs> Best intentions, some... no shot. It's not happening. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sometimes, like people would forget, and then it'd be like, "Okay, you got to bring it to school. It's not yours. You're not. Allowed... You can't keep it. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta hand it over at school." Um, but yeah, and I regret this so much. But I foolishly had that spreadsheet on my high school Google Drive, and it was deleted when I graduated high school. So oh. all the all the data is lost forever. I shared it. I shared it with my personal email, but I didn't transfer ownership, and that was a mistake. So like, it didn't matter if I shared it because it's just deleted. Yeah, Google's I, that, so finicky that way. I'm sorry, Seal. Oh, yeah. that's so it's, sad. Yeah, it's a it's rough. At least I still do have the the memory though. I was number one. I was number <laughs> one in melee, and um, and I still have the trophy to this day. So. That's a very fond memory. But then, um, it, sort of in the middle of that, like the, they ended after they ended after like 2015. I think the last one was in 2016 because I graduated in 2017 from uh, high school. So I, I did start going to real tournaments during that period. 
starting with Smash and Splash 1 in June of 2015. Um, it was a pretty fun tournament. I attended that with a couple of my friends from that group. Uh, none of us did especially well. I won one set against a Jigglypuff player, um, and I got eight stocked by Dark Rain on stream. <laughs> this video, this is on YouTube. If you look up uh, Seal vs. Dark Rain, if you want to see a uh, 16-year-old Seal getting eight stocked by Dark Rain, I counterpicked him to FD <laughs> because I didn't know what stages were good for Sheik. And let me tell you, FD is not the pick against Captain Falcon. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just I was just happy to play on stream. I, I'm not embarrassed by that set at all because it was my literal first tournament and Dark Rain is one of the greatest players of all time. Did you um, know who, you knew who Dark Rain was by oh, the yeah. time you played? Yeah. Yeah, because I like I said, I've been getting into the scene um, for, for about like already maybe like three quarters of a year at that point because it was Smash 4 came out in I think like October of 2014. And that tournament happened in June, so it had already been like nine months of, for me to absorb uh, as much as I could. Um, the first thing I actually watched live was uh, the Apex 2015 Salty Suite, one of the most legendary events in Melee history. <laughs> I did you know, watch the, that the live. The PC yeah. Chris versus Ken Salty Suite is yes. actually a pretty good set. And then the PC crowd surfed afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was so sick. Man, that, that was a great uh, event to spectate. Maybe not quite as much to attend. Um, but yeah, so in, in 2015, I, I attended uh, only two tournaments. The second one was Kings of the North 4 in November of 2015. Um, if you have ever seen me at like a sizable tournament, I'm wearing my Kings of the North 4 t-shirt. It's a slightly blue shirt. It has like a little white symbol with a uh, crow sitting on a sitting on um, a branch and has all the names of the attendees on the back, which is so cool. There's like a few hundred names on the back of it. Um, but yeah, that was in Milwaukee. I think I also only won one set there. I actually didn't go 02 for quite a while. Eventually I did though, because I mean, it happens to pretty much anyone eventually if you tend enough locals without uh, grinding hard enough. And that's yes. fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going up too. Well, especially but, uh, if your goal is to not imp like if you're saying I'm going to improve, I'm going to improve and you go on two every time you go, well, this doesn't seem to be going great. Or if you're like me, where I say I want to improve. How often did you play this week, Jesse? I, <laughs> well, I've been busy. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's, you know, I, I deserve to go on two. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's all right though. Yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone has that. I mean, some people maybe never went O2, but that's those are pretty rare. Those are pretty rare. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. So the other notable thing in 2015, um, I mean, still true to this day, but I watched so much melee on YouTube. I would literally watch every single set that I could find. Um, like, go well, because I watched the documentary, of course, in uh, like at the end of 2014. Um, and so I, I was like just looking up the players featured in that and watching like every video I could find. I would just look up like Ken versus PC Chris and just like scroll down the YouTube results, watch everything. And I would add the ones I liked to this playlist, which is still on my YouTube channel, but I gave up ever completing and organizing that. I, I did it for about a year. I think there's like 668 videos or 686 videos in there or something. These are all just the ones I liked too. Like I watched way more than that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I, about I just, to say, you watched more than that. <laughs> yeah, this, this was just in the first like two years as well. I, I would literally just watch everything I could find on YouTube. Um, because yeah, I just wanted to know about the history. I wanted to uh, know more about the game. I just wanted to know everything I could know. Um, and that's still true today. I mean, I, I watch most things these days I watch live and then I'll like go and comment on it if I, if I felt like it or if I'm gonna rewatch it, then I comment on it. Um, partially just because I wanna like have my thoughts preserved for myself because I love looking back at old, old Videos and seeing a comment, thing. oh yeah, I did, I did think that back in 2016 <laughs> or whatever. Real quick, um, I just go back to like a Sheik Falcon matchup, make sure that I'm yeah. not coming off base or like to completely changing my mind. Oh good, I'm consistent. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely watch. I actually didn't comment on stuff in the first like two years. It was more later on when I started doing that, but. Um, 
yeah, I just watch a lot of stuff. Uh, I still didn't really attend that many tournaments. Like, like I mentioned, only two real tournaments in 2015. In 2016, I had a goal that was go to one thing a month at least. And I did, unfortunately was not able to do that. But I did go to like 10 tournaments, I think. I went to two of the Rubicons, which uh, older Chicago players will remember, was the, the Chicago monthly series around here. They would always fly in a good player. And the good player would always win, except the one time where uh, Dart successfully defended against Wizrobe. Um, there is a Melee Stats video about that, which is very good. Um, definitely recommend watching that if you haven't seen it. Uh, I'll give um, you a preview. A down smash just completely turns things around. Yeah, it's a very cool set. Dart, Dart is a legend. Um, not sure where he is these days. I think he might be in St. Louis or something, but... Anyway, shout out to him. Um, yeah, where's Dark Rain? Where are all these Midwest people Dark sealed? Rain? Did you chase them away? I... What's going on? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, I do. I do think Dark Rain's sick. He he competed at Evo for a couple of years, even after he wasn't super active. I think maybe 2017 Evo 2017 was probably the last tournament he attended. Um, whenever I play Falcon, I'm always picking his color in his honor because. Uh, He's sick, and he also destroyed me, so <laughs> I want to honor him. Um, let me think. What else happened in 2016? Went to a couple other events, met some people, but I didn't really become a part of the scene. That's the thing. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't good at the game, and I didn't really do anything. I didn't go out of my way to talk to people that much, and I didn't attend very much. No locals. I only attended, like, monthlies. And, well, actually, I think I went to a couple of GHQ locals but yeah ultimately i really wasn't active and the turning point was 2017 when i started college um, i went up to wisconsin and that was when i be definitely that was when i would say i became a part of the melee community um because i would make a lot of friends i would talk to people i'd go to a lot more tournaments go to all the smash fests every single week um go to the the bi-weekly tournaments um just play and talk to people, do commentary when on the rare occasions where there were streams there. Um, yeah, definitely shout out to all the people there. Biggest shout out to people there of, uh, biggest shout out of people there to Super Mr. JMT, the uh, Peach player and former president of the Smash Club. He definitely carried that scene. Um, he did so much work to allow us to be able to have our nice tournaments. Um, so yeah, I, I, I owe him so much. I, I will forever be in debt to him for all of the hard work he put in. Um, let me think, though. What else occurred around that time? If you're starting to get in fully involved in everything, does that mean, other than commenting on every YouTube video, are you trying to see what's happening on Twitter? Because Smash Twitter has been on fire in some capacity, whether it's a good fire or just really bad fire ever since evo 2013 i think ever since then we're just continually cycling through certain topics if things are slow or something big is happening overreacting to it and are you are you fully in this at that point or would you say you're mostly just focusing on the local stuff once you're in college and up in wisconsin yeah that's that's actually a pretty good question which uh brings up a funny a funny anecdote so I actually, the only reason why I created my Twitter account was so that I could nominate Drug Fox for the first Smash Summit in 2015. <laughs> That's like awesome. My join, yeah. <laughs> my join date was September 2015, just so I could nominate him, because I was a huge fan of him in 2015 when he played Sheik. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. The, the Drug Fox Sheik era was magnificent. Uh, when he was like, he, he was like the first super great tech chaser. I mean, Tope, I think, was the original tech chaser. That's T-O-P-E. Um, yes, yep. But, yeah, but Drug Fox was like the one who did it on the big stage. He almost beat Leffen at Evo. Um, but, yeah, shout out to him for that. It was I was a huge fan of his. Um, and also Plop, of course. I mean, literally every single Sheik player loves Plop. You'll never find someone who doesn't. Um, so yeah, I nominated, I, I made my Twitter just to nominate him. And then to actually answer your question, um, I wasn't super involved with this, with, uh, like smash Twitter. And I don't think I ever like really have been the only period that I would say I was active on Twitter was, um, 
like 2017 and 18. Um, but that was more for other online stuff, um, like Siva Gunner. Um, don't don't really need to get into that though, because I I could say a lot about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, shout out to them. Um, never really got too into Smash Twitter these days. I only really tweet uh, when I'm commentating or um if i like do well at a tournament or if there's just like something i want to share or talk about um but i still i still look at every so often and i'll like my friends tweets when they do well at tournaments and stuff like that uh, so i think of smash twitter as a great way to get part of the greater scene you won't be connected to your local that well in fact twitter is a really bad place to sort of get connected into your specific region but it's great to see who are all the big wigs talking about or what are all the big wigs talking about? For example, a practical task tweet, as of right now, is the talk of the town because it's the prompts for all the MPGR oh. voters. <laughs> and like, what what do you all think of this? And of course, these top players have plenty of thoughts. Yeah. And it's just darned if you do, darned if you don't. It's great. It's great. And that was also annoying, but it's great. <laughs> so yeah, the ranking season is one of the... Uh, I feel like ranking and summit season are like the two most heated times on uh like smash twitter well especially this 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 ranking season is so important because it's the first one we've had in its its proper state you could talk about the blur rank and hey uh, it was so interesting to me how blur does this whole ranking thing gets people to vote on it so on and so on and then when he goes on to waiting for game to talk about it with uh, the melee stats people they're all talking about it like, yeah, that, that's that sounds about right. And so I'm thinking to myself, no, oh, why aren't we just pushing this forward and saying, let's I don't <laughs> I don't want to, you know, put blur at too high of a pedestal. But if, if everybody who likes to talk about melee is saying, yeah, this sounds about right. Well, can't we just say this is the pandemic voting and then leave it at that? But I like I let it go because I knew we're going to get these rankings at some point. But it's it's two plus years of of white knuckling and saying this is my time to get ranked and mm -hmm. people want to be ranked they want to be ranked where they feel they deserve to be and for the people who were never on it before they want to see their names on it for the people who were on the lower end who are now pushing top 30 or top 10 they want to see their names in those spots and the amount of contentiousness is going to be insane in the coming weeks after Gommel, I think Gommel's like the unofficial end of the ranking season, if I recall correctly. You could correct me if I'm wrong, though. It's either that or Double Down. I forget which one is in which order. Oh, yeah, which one think, comes first, yeah. Yeah, whichever one is second, I think, is the last tournament that's counted. I could be mistaken, though. And that'll um, get a lot of great data, by the way. Just saying, like, you have uh, big majors like, like Genesis to look at, and you could say... Uh, the other big event that just happened semi recently. Oh, sorry, uh, the summits, that kind of stuff, and then Double Down mm -hmm. and Gommel will be will be very big events. But something just happened. Oh my gosh, why can't I remember? Left and one Battle BC four. There we go. That also yeah. had a lot of top player attendance. So you get a, you'll, you're we're gonna have enough data to get a good ranking out of this. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm actually gonna be doing a uh, test ballot so that way I can do. Uh, Deal a real ballot for well no 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 I'm I'm doing a test ballot for the actual rank so that way I can do one for the top 100 at the end of the year um because I I was told uh in 2019 like oh just just ask for a ballot because I'm like a lot really active with melee stats so they're like like they're, they're like yeah we'll refer you just ask for a ballot if you want one and I was like uh, I'm kind of nervous to do that so I didn't and then I had to wait two years for another chance so. <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe, uh, you will see my name as a panelist for the 2022 year end rankings. Um, no better yeah. person than you for, to, to do that seal, because with a chic player understanding all the hard work that these sheiks are up to this, that I say best year for you to get officially involved <laughs> with being a, a panelist for the MPGR vote. I was invited to be a, someone on the, uh, on the the Inven Global Community Voice Board of saying, hey, best content pieces, best content creators, oh, yeah. best players, best tournaments. I was I was tickled pink. I was like, aw, thanks for thinking of me. That's cool. So it's just fun uh, to do that because that's a little more harmless. But I, like you, if somebody said to me, yeah, let's do a top 100. Cypher, show me what you got. I would go, 
I do not want to do that. No, I'm, I would be way too nervous to do that uh, mm -hmm. because I don't keep spreadsheets anyway. That's why I'll never be a true Melee Stats nerd. I'm on the server. I talk. You know, I, I, I like being on the Melee Stats server, but I'll never be one of them, you know, because I don't keep <laughs> spreadsheets. Why would I do that? That's a huge waste of time. I'm sorry. It's, fair enough, uh, I don't fair care. enough. <laughs> Man, actually, now that you say that, I was, I guess I was a melee stancer from, uh, even from high school. If I was uh, yes, keeping exactly. That, if as I soon as you said that, that, I was like, oh, own. it makes sense. That seals on melee stats. Yep. Together. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I spend so much time on their server. Um, yeah, shout out to melee stats. I, I love those dudes. They, they're good friends, make good content. And, uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Um, I'm excited for the first video of the year from them. It's uh, oh, I, yeah, been... I I am very very excited. I don't know what it is. I'm just very excited because I've been. Uh, I know that you're not an Eagles fan. How could you be? But I'm basically on the level of Jason Kelsey right now, where I'm like, for six whole months you've been starved of this melee stats video. You've been waiting this whole time. <laughs> like I'm I'm pretty much there now. Just uh, when Alston melee disappeared. I'm sure you've listened to the Austin awesome Melee podcast yeah. when they disappeared mm -hmm. and and had to do all kinds of different things. And so I understand them not being able to make stuff or do the podcast. But during that intermission, I was just so sad and I wanted my, my Austin Melee podcast back and I've got it back recently. So shout outs to Ryan, Mike and Ted for holding it down while Patty is in Washington or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's, Austin Melee. Great yep. channel for sure. Absolutely. So let's talk about some channels that you find to be fun, interesting, engaging, because n who, who better to judge Melee content than Seal? So talk to me about stuff you've been watching recently that you feel is either uh, like deserves more attention or who you think is going to be a big name in the coming years. Or you could talk to, you could just talk about what has been grabbing your attention the most in the Melee content creation sphere on YouTube. Okay. Oh, I should have prepared a list. I'm I'm just gonna say off the start, I am going to forget at least like five to ten people that I would that I'll be so sad afterwards that I didn't shout out. Um I promise if I if I don't mention you, it does not mean that that I, I don't like your videos. There um, should be a page where you could see all of your comments like on each video and you could look at the whole thing and be like, Oh yeah, yep, 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 yep. But I don't yeah. I don't know if that exists. There's so. also like some some channels that I haven't uploaded in a while. I guess in theory, hang, hang on actually, let me let me just pull up my subscription list here. Oh that yeah, I subscription. Just, I can just sort of go down that. And Your then, subscription uh, feed will have all the recent uploads of stuff you've been watching yeah. in the past week or two. Although, if you're subscribed to certain channels like VGBC or or BTS, no. if you, yeah. you'll get a bunch of vods just like crammed in, and it really logs it up. I'm actually a That's subscription right. feed person. I hate the home feed because yeah, I'll miss same. stuff of people that I'm subscribed to because it feeds mm -hmm. me the algorithm instead of feeding me the people that I actually want to watch on YouTube, dang it. Alrighty, I'm gonna go down the list here. I'll probably say like just a couple things about each person so it's not too long because there's gonna be quite a few. Um, and then it, it sort of sorts them in this list. Like I'm looking at the, the list of uh, subscriptions rather than just like the videos. I think it sort of sorts them based on their activity. So like the more recent uploaders are gonna be higher up here. Um, well, the first one right at the top, Melee Stats Archive. That would be because uh, I just watched the uh, episode of Waiting for Game with Vish. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Game is probably uh, probably the the Melee podcast that I do watch the most. Uh, BSM is very excellent. No no uh, shade there, but uh, Waiting for Game is a is a very uh, very good one. They talk a lot about stuff that I'm super interested in, it like being uh, stats stuff, um, what's going on in the community. They always have uh, really cool guests, like they had Vish this this uh, past week. Um, and also, since uh, technically I'm not a patron for Melee Stats, but like I have an honorary one since uh, Nikki, the uh, that, that's N I K K I, like the Slippy Dev, and also Melee Everyday guy. Um, he was like a higher tier one, so he's able to like give someone the status, and he did that for me. So shout out to Nikki. Let's go for, for a multitude of reasons. Shout out to him for being a Slippy Dev, one of the Melee Everyday crew. Like that guy's amazing. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, 
they, they they'll ask questions that you ask for that one in the in the patron channel so i am well you're now the question master. master you are the premier question asker for melee Apparently. stats that's even better yeah. I, I we we've been calling me the question superstar lately so i'll take that um let's see what do we have next going down oh um this is a pretty good channel there is a uh let me see um yeah this one this one uh people have been talking about lately this channel snares it is just a highlight channel um but the the compilations are are very like quality is, is good selections and he um he or, or she or, or they I'm not sure uh, about the identity of this poster but um they do they do uh, give credit for every single source, which is huge. You can't have highlight content without crediting every single source. That's very big. I think uh, like not being a content thief is very important. Um, so yes. shout out to that person. Uh, Snares um, is a he him on the Scrub okay. Summit, which is a tournament series that Ooh. I believe Snares actually runs. So doing a lot oh. of doing a lot of stuff in the community. Okay. So I, I found him. out about I found about Snares because Awesome Sauce tweeted. I was going to mention. Yeah. I, I also, so Awesome Sauce mentioned that uh, he saw Snare's video recommended. That was where also I found him. <laughs> so I guess YouTube, YouTube's doing, uh, doing Snare some favors right now. So that's cool. Um, been watching some of Plop's videos. I mean, just stream highlight content, but I'm, I'm a fan of Plop, so I'll be watching that. What have you been thinking um, about Mango and Plop playing together on stream? Because that was such a rarity. I don't know if it ever even happened before this year. Yeah, I'm thinking the reason for it's probably because Plup's on the West Coast now. So it's not Florida to SoCal, it's just uh, Oregon to SoCal. Right, um, which... but that never stops Zane and Mango from doing stuff. That's and, true. Uh, and or uh, apparently Arizona has bad internet, so even acts mm -hmm. to Mango, Mango would complain about for Mango X Wednesday. That was also delay-based, <laughs> so yeah, that they could play on all the stages with items on and stuff. But... I, I always just thought <laughs> cross country's bad, sure, but I want to see Plum versus Mango. It never yeah. stops us from seeing Zane versus Mango play all the time. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, that's but I'm true. happy. I'm happy they're playing together on stream occasionally now because they ah they their matches are always great. Yeah, they are. They they have some amazing sets and also just like really cool friendlies. Um, so let's see. I'm going down a bit more here. Oh, here here's a here's one people may not know about. Um. Currently, the channel is called Yetis Exist, but it used to be called Yetis Don't Exist. This is the <laughs> number one melee player in the Philippines, actually, and he makes content about their scene. Wait a second, um, I've heard of this player now. Y yeah, you mention it. Yeah, Yetis Don't Exist. I don't know why he changed his stuff to Yetis Exist. I guess he changed his opinion on, on the, the matter. Um, but yeah, he, he's made some really cool videos about, um, like, Asian players like he has two different videos about um, Japanese players Hutuka and um, Ingen whom people are probably more familiar with um, because he competed at Smash World Tour and actually almost defeated Magi there um, um, but yeah he, he's really cool makes uh, content about the Filipino South Southeast Asian and then uh, just Asia, Asia Pacific in general melee scene which does not get much exposure so it, it's definitely cool to see someone out there making videos about them. Yes, um, indeed. I just need to get a link, copy that, go oh, over yeah. to my Discord. I'm still rocking with one monitor, and I'm going to have to do that for a while. Same. But yeah. if I just put it... Uh, wait, why would I put it in this? I should just, like, can I mess... No, I can't email myself in here, can I? Well, you keep <laughs> going while I figure this out. Where yeah, sure. So next up, uh, I have Pipsqueak's channel. Um, everyone knows Pipsqueak now. Uh, I've, I've been watching his videos for a while. He, he started uploading somewhat regularly and uh, makes pretty informative videos about various topics. One of the first ones that uh, I really liked was he talked about buffer jump out of shield using the C-stick in order to sort of become airborne before Fox hits you with shine, so that way you can act immediately. Um, recommend checking that video out if you are a Sheik or a Peach player. Um, some pretty good counterplay. Next, Awesome Sauce. I mean, everyone probably knows Awesome Sauce. He makes probably what I would call the most well-produced content in the entire Melee community right now. Um, he goes crazy with, like, VFX. He, he's got the uh, 
<laughs> I saw that stare. No, no, here's the, here, okay, uh, hold on, I need to switch to me screen. Walt, we all appreciate the work that you do, but you just can't fill this short, did you? <laughs> Okay, sorry. Walt is out here. Well, I'm gonna get to Walt for sure. Um, <laughs> but awesome sauce, honestly, like he, he's just on such a high level, um, and he he does uh, not upload very frequently. But I mean, it's because it takes him so long to make his videos. Mm, he, he's yeah. so entertaining. Oh, he has easily the best thumbnails. No one comes even close to Awesome Sauce's thumbnails. Every single one of them is just like so funny and creative, and. I remember he tweeted, he, he uploaded like a Yoshi story video recently where it was like Randall, like with like a, a hand that was turned like white and he's like breaking the stage in half. Um, and he posted that picture and said, like uploading my masterpiece this week. There's also a video <laughs> like just talking about the thumbnail alone being a masterpiece. And he, he's right. Like I, also, his videos are so, so good for people who are not into competitive Melee. Like, I post those in Discord servers where there's no Melee players except for me, just with my other friends. They love them. They literally all love his videos. They're like, these are so entertaining. I like, he, he, he's, uh, he doesn't go, like, he goes super in-depth, but makes it all easy to understand. Like, he, he's just amazing. I, I love Awesome Sauce. And I was a fan of him as well when he was just a highlight channel. Um, and... Yeah, so I, I, I'm a big fan of Awesome Sauce. Um, next up, GG Melee. Um, definitely also one that most people are probably familiar with. Great, uh, great content featuring PPMD, Zane, Nun slash Bond slash Wizzy Fan, <laughs> and of course, Tove. Um, all doing just a bunch of different Melee stuff. They, they've had some really fun game modes, some like opinion based stuff. It's just cool to always, it's always cool to hear from them. Um, so is it bad for me to say that I feel like their peak in terms of game modes that they've played was when they did the adventure mode stages together? Yeah, those were crazy. <laughs> they did the co-op adventure mode ones that were, um, were, and then they would do like random challenges in it. Like they would be like, oh, we gotta all, we all gotta like do this way. Or like, we gotta, I'm trying, I can't quite remember cause it's been a while since I watched those, but I remember they did some really fun stuff and those seemed pretty difficult. Yes, they, they had they had like basically the idea of like you get hit once and you're pretty much screwed kind of a thing. And I thought that was yeah. perfect because they can all hit each other. There's a lot of right. character enemies on the screens, especially for like the Mushroom Kingdom scroller. And I, it just reminds me of playing Subspace Emissary with my brother. Like when Toph would go, Golden Guardian Gamers roll out kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. I would go like, oh, we didn't say that when we played Subspace Emissary and Brawl as kids, but we would just like go like, all right, let's move out. Like, you know, it was just right. fun. It was so fun to watch that. That's probably yeah. been my favorite game mode stuff they did. And of course I love seeing Toph win every single Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, those fun. Jeopardies are great. I, I'm a big Melee trivia fan, so always, always watching those. Um, That's when you do your gamer lead see a seal. You go like, I need to make sure I get this question correct. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I'll I'll play along. I'll I'll be like, what? They didn't remember that this was Evo 2016 and not 2015. I can't believe it. <laughs> Especially since the background changes. Like you could you basically you can know which Evo it is based on what Mango looks like and what the background is. So I don't That's understand true. why they get them confused true. with each other. Tof, so Tof is amazing at melee trivia. But I think he's actually bad with tournament numbers and years. For some reason, like he just seems to mix them up a lot. He goes to like, a oh, bunch of them. Of six or seven. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely the best of the four of them. I don't think any of them would be offended if they ever heard that. Uh, yeah. After that, let's see. Oh, Sigma, um, the Chilean uh, melee player creator of my favorite per my personal favorite combo video of all time uh freestyle people who were uh, around in like 2014 15 may remember that one made some waves um he to me is forever the god of reverse back air he like in that video freestyle he he also played like every single character there's like mario clips donkey kong clips like chic fox falco falcon marth uh there's probably some peach in there um Samus, like he, he has like every character and, and he would do reverse back air with like every single one of them. And I would just be like, <laughs> like, how do you, how do you see this? How do you see this opportunity? Um, that guy's awesome. He still posts combo videos. Um, and I do enjoy them. And then after that we have 
possibly the goat. Oh, it's so hard to call someone the goat, but I I feel like I, in terms of like my melee life, grew up on this channel, and that is SSBM tutorials. Um, I I would call myself possibly like. I don't know if I could, if I could, if I have the right to call myself the biggest fan. I'm, I'm at least the top five biggest fan of SSBM tutorials. <laughs> I, I watched all their videos. I would like comment on every single one of them. Like uh, even the ones that were like for other characters or whatever, like that have nothing to do with Sheik. It would be like, are you a, are you a Samus player? And I still watch them and be like, yes, I, I love this video. This is great. Um, or, or they talk about like, like how to beat Martha Fox, and I'm like, I don't play either of these characters, but I, I'm enjoying this because um, they were they were like probably the premier melee uh, content creators in like 2015, 16, like in that range. Um, yeah, maybe besides like GR Smash, who I, I will definitely get to later as well. Um, also, would say I I grew up in terms of melee on GR Smash, but. We'll oh, of him. course. I wanted to say something about about SSBM tutorials. You're the yeah. you're a top five biggest fan if you checked out the game that Kira is making. Have you done that? I have. Yeah, Epiphany City. I I haven't I haven't actually played it yet, but I do have it. Okay. Um, so. Well, see, there you go. See, top <laughs> five biggest fan. <laughs> it's already settled. Yeah, shout out to Kira. Kira is actually he he's um he I, I did I think... make a spreadsheet. Oh my gosh. You Sorry. did? I just realized. When, you found uh, a spreadsheet? I was going to say, SSBN Tutorials, Kira made a video, Top 10 Reasons Why I Hate Melee or something to that effect <laughs> last year, which is a great yeah. list, by the way. I really enjoyed that video. A very candid, honest look about some of the things that are very frustrating about Melee, which I, I feel like is it was a great piece of content. That was my favorite video that I saw from SSBN Tutorials last year. And so when I was trying to review all the videos that I had watched on YouTube for Melee in 2021 for that mm -hmm. list that I was talking about oh, earlier. Yeah. I, I did that. actually make a spreadsheet about all the creators and the videos that I had seen and which ones I was going to try to put into my top 10 and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So I did that make a sense. spreadsheet. We got I, him. I can't believe it. We got him. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Cypher is right officially now. a spreadsheet guy. Patron content. I made a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's ago. see what's next up uh, going down the list here is Radar. Um, someone who I, I uh, would call a friend, especially after Genesis. They got to spend some time with him. We had uh, Jack in the Box together, talked about commentary and, and uh, all that and content as well. Um, so big shout out to him. Uh, He's, he's a very nice guy and also killing it with commentary lately. Um, got to do like top, some of top 64, I'm pretty sure at Genesis and did some of top eight at battle of VC. Yes. The um, first block of top eight with Walt. Right. And that yeah. was, Oh, that was so cool. To all the haters that Walt was reading from on Reddit or whatever, There's you guys haters? Can screw yourselves. Walt and radar are great commentators together yeah. as, a, as a duo. And I really like how they, they both feed off each other really, really well. And I think having them at big tournaments in the future, oh, it makes so much sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then to get into his content, I mean, Radar, I, I've i followed him for a long time on, on or subscribed to him for a long time on YouTube back when the channel was just called Micro Melee because he would make uh, little little videos that it were just called Micro Melee where he'd talk about small uh, situations in game. And he'd also would make Macro Melee as well, which were more defined concepts but he has great presentation as well um i always liked the like sort of layout he has and uh he would have like little sound effects and stuff like that which which were cool um and also i love the backing track which he personally created it's like this uh, arrangement of the melee menu theme it's very chill um a uh, great musician i mean the lo-fi yeah. album that radar put out i think at the beginning of this year is something that i do listen to every now and again it's a great album yeah so definitely big shout out to him um next here is dark gen x another person who i would call a friend first met him at uh full bloom five in uh 2019 um but yeah he he's been making content as well definitely um on the like less uh serious and less like um like big production side he just makes short little videos that are gonna either make you laugh or if you're watching the uh 
the uh, breaking news mm -hmm. uh the spongebob fish videos then you, you'll you'll maybe learn something that you didn't that you missed out on in the week in melee yes um, so yeah big shout out to him as well he makes funny stuff and uh, the uh what is that series i actually can't remember what this what his series is called this the, week in melee the, are you talking about this week in melee yeah. okay i got that confused with last night in melee which is the melee stats like twitter <laughs> Series. Or, uh, or this week uh, in melee. Hey, Hada, right. what's new in melee? Um, right. These names are too similar. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta have uh, some. I don't know. Actually, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Look, um, we're hot and I just like summarizing what happened during the week and offering some opinions. Like, there's your 30 minute bite of what happened in the week. Dark Gen X is killing it with the 60 second version. Yes. And then shout outs to SF for running last night in Melee because I love seeing results. But do I like looking at them all individually and and trying to put that all together? I don't like the idea of doing that, but SF does. So shout outs to SF. Right. Friend of the, yeah, friend of the show. That's a, he's, he's a legend for that for sure um i'm i'm uh i was a big sf fan from early on when he was just reporting con or he was just reporting in the melee stats discord <laughs> um but yeah definitely definitely shout out to him i i'm actually those tweets get a lot of traction like and people care about them a lot like people are like oh like i was the i'm the player spot like that's that's huge or like oh you didn't mention my tournament so many people go in the melee stats discord and are like how do i get my tournament on that tweet and i'm always <laughs> surprised because I'm I I don't actually look at the tweets that much because I'm already aware of things just from reading the melee stats discord on its own. Um, but like people really care about those tweets, which is cool. I'm I'm glad that that's filling like a niche that people care about. Um, let me see here who's next. Ambi, shout out to Ambi, one of the melee stats uh, people. The the uh, I believe the creative producer. I believe is uh, his title, um, but he he's he like works the most on their their content. But I also I also had uh, watched his YouTube channel for a while before because I remember this video he made in I think 2016 or 17. I always forget. It was called GameCube controllers in the era of the Smashbox, which this was way way before like controller debate has become like what it has today. Yes. What he did was he took a GameCube controller. And he drilled holes in the shell. Um, here, let me hold up my controller so I can uh, sort of illustrate that. So, like, here's the controller. He drilled holes like here on the inside. Let me see if that's on the screen. Like here. Oh, you know what? Let me on, put you on, on full screen. Inside. Sorry, we have the technology here. Oh, yeah. Now. All right, now you so, got so it. So like here and here, he drilled three holes. So that way, when you're holding the controller, you can like use these fingers back here to press them. Um, and then it would just be like, here's what you can do with this sort of thing. And like thinking about that today, it's unbelievable because that's almost like the reality where it almost feels like that is the reality we're living in. I mean, it's not quite, no one's adding extra buttons to their controller yet, but we have like remapping on a physical GameCube controller. We have, uh, we have all these digital controllers, but yeah, Ambi is a, is a legend for sure. Um, also he, he, a big friend of mine. And fellow top 64 placer Genesis. <laughs> um, him and I doing it at the same time was, was uh, just amazing. So we talk about that too. Yeah. Um, let me see who else here. Frigid. Shout out to Frigid. Um, I believe Fr uh, Frigid has not uploaded in quite a while, which makes me very sad. But um, she had very uh, well produced content that was like about concepts in Melee, like specifically. Um, what was it called? The series was called I Play Better Melee. And there was like concepts about mentality, about like practice and stuff like that. And um, like the channel is still pretty small, I think. People don't know about it. So hugely recommend checking uh, Frigid's channel out. That, that Frigid is spelled P-H-R-I-G-I-D. Um, oh, okay. Most, most Excellent. People would maybe assume it's with an F, but yeah, it's P-H. No, I would totally assume that. So yeah. good, good uh, looking Frigid, out. Thanks for looking out for me. Yeah, I think Frigid's also the uh, number one melee player in Indianapolis. Um, the Captain Falcon made, so definitely shout out. Um, let's see what else we got. I see the Waffle 77. Don't, <laughs> don't think that channel's been uploaded on in quite a while. Yeah, uh, but, um, but we, of course, appreciate uh, oh, the... Oh, of course. The... Just making sure that the people know that this is what's this is what 
kind of helped to usher in into the YouTube era was homemade waffles just recording. And that's how we got Wombo Combo, all that stuff. Yeah. So important. It's such an important thing that, that, that uh, Brandon was doing back in the day when it was so mm-hmm. much harder to do it. <laughs> you had to have yeah. a literal right equipment to do it. Shout out to Brandon. Yeah. I wanted to shout out a, 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 um, uh, something that is on the newer side. Mm-hmm. This person made a video about like the greatest um, grand finals in Melee history or whatever, whatever. You know, the hook for, for mm-hmm. Zane versus Mango, Mango versus Zane. I, I, nobody says Zane versus Mango. So they recently made a new video, so I wanted to shout that out. So if I look up uh, something about greatest Melee that... Are you talking about Bool Master? Yes. He was actually the next person on my list. Oh my gosh. I watched a video that, that he published today. But yeah, it was the, the greatest story in Melee history. Was uh, it? Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah. I was going to say, the Bullmaster put out a video very recently that I haven't yeah. watched yet, but I want to make sure I, I shout out because I'm going to watch it when I have time. And I, I really liked Greatest Story in Melee History. So when somebody I. puts out a really a really intentional video like that, and it's so long, I know how much work that takes. Like, shout outs. That's impressive. Yeah, no, definitely. And and uh, this is like a a new, very new channel to melee as well. I'm pretty sure uh, this person only started uploading melee videos like within the last few months or something. I, I took a look at the backlog of this channel, and I'm I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure they're they're de- they're definitely new towards getting views at least. I think they have like only a thousand subscribers. Right. I look at snares and bullmaster in the same light that they're sort yes. of on the newer side, but. Yes. I mean, hey, doing great stuff. Uh, I like the fact that somebody's trying to put together compilations and doing it right. I like the fact that there are video essays for me to watch because I just, you know, feel like there hasn't been a ton of those this year. And look, I made one formal uh, video essay and then I did a top 10 and that took so much work that I thought, wow, this is... um. No wonder these aren't made every week by everybody else. <laughs> like This just takes so much out of me to do. Uh, yep. somehow podcasting several times a week is somehow less work when it might not be, but <laughs> I know how to do this. It's so, right. so weird mode. to, to go from this to do, trying to do a video essay, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Um, let's see. Some people I don't have too much to say about, like, uh, see Aiden, Aiden Calvin's uh, channel here. He only made one melee video recently. It was like, you still take those melee players are broke. Yeah. Shout out to him. Uh, Prof, the uh, Florida Marth and Sheik player, one of the fastest melee players you will ever see. I think by far the fastest Sheik player I've ever seen is Prof. Like makes makes Plop look not that fast. Pro, well, Prof, Prof absolutely ran circles around me the like one or two times we played on unranked. I was like, this, I I can't believe what I'm seeing right here. Um, and uh, yeah, he makes real cool. Um, combo videos they're usually pretty short but they're cool also he has a nasty mewtwo absolutely nasty mewtwo um and when i was talking about justice at the beginning of the recording the the first justice and friends or i forget the exact title of the of the mm-hmm. video but i really enjoyed that and it was a compilation of a bunch of different players and some of their cool stuff so i i love seeing Justice putting out uh, combo stuff every now and again. Usually they're more of like Twitter clips, but every once in a while he'll like make a bigger one or a longer one and put it up on his YouTube. So Justice XYZ, I believe it is the channel name. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's see who is next here. Um, I don't know. We have some people that aren't. I wouldn't really call a content creator. Like uh, I'm, I'm subscribed to Gumi's channel uh, just in case he post any updates about uh mm. like stuff that's going on with the goom wave i don't even have one but i do like to be aware of it so yes and um, crane put out a video of like how to do greg turbo's open source frame oh, yeah. one so i haven't seen that yet but i want to watch it because i watched mm-hmm. crane's video of how to do a cheap cardboard diy controller for like a rectangle controller and i thought it was really interesting yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to take apart a box controller, but I want to just see how, like, I, like you, I just, I like kind of having a rough idea of how things work. 
it's even better when you can get these people onto the podcast. I was able to have one of the firmware, the lead firmware developer for the FOB controller on recently. Shout outs to the Frost, who is doing great work with the FOB controller. I'm really excited to see how that turns out in the coming months. But like hearing about how they have almost every part of a GCC able to be made or manufactured. Yeah, it's and, awesome. Except for the stick box. They they are have they have yet to unlock the secret uh, of the best stick box. And as soon as that happens and they can make a bunch of those, it's like we're we're all set to go after that. Yeah. Go away. The only thing we will need is for someone to manufacture a CRT somehow. Oh yeah, that that's doesn't it. seem possible though. I I'll, I'll say it. I think CRTs are like actually pretty dangerous. Like if, if, if you break them, it can like implode or something like that. Like the, they're, they're very dangerous. Like I don't, I don't see someone hobbyist starting to make CRTs. Um, the simple truth of the matter is, and you would be able to talk about this. You've been to enough tournaments. Are monitors not able to get you there? Even yeah, if that's true. Monitors are, even if, even if now. it's not like you look at it as a, as a player who's raised born and raised on CRTs. Mm -hmm. If you can get NYC Melee, which is the biggest local in terms of n average numbers or one of the biggest locals in average numbers in the world, if you can get all those people to play on CR, sorry, on monitors, excuse me, with, a, with all the codes to try to make it as much like a CRT as possible. Of course, audio is where I feel the biggest contention is for a monitor for my personal experience is like, I would like to be able to hear the game, please, consistently. I don't know if, it, if there needs to be speakers at all of them, as long as when I plug in my headphones that I can actually hear the game, that would be great. Yeah. yeah, that matters to me too as well. I always use audio to know how many needles I have charged. Um, so that's, that's uh, handy for oh, sure. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, actually, the, the local around here, Mid Lane Melee in Chicago, is also a monitor local, and I haven't had any issues with it there. Um, but I do generally prefer competing on CRT just since it's what I'm used to. Um, and it, it feels like maybe very slightly better, but that could just be placebo. I honestly don't know that much about the technicals of this stuff. Um, people who I respect, like Ambi Sinister, do um, have like very in-depth information about why monitors may not be completely perfect, but I'm not really here to argue it myself. <laughs> I don't know enough. Um, I will say... Uh I think that playing on CRT completes it for me because mm -hmm. you're playing a game that was made in 2001 with the TV that it was that it was meant to be played on, right? Instead yeah. of instead of a monitor. I like the fact that we modernized Melee. We wouldn't have rollback Melee unless we modernized right. it. So we have so much to be thankful for from all the people who push that stuff forward. So if we're not going to make CRTs, if those are eventually going to go away completely, then that'll be sad. But at least we have something to land on and eventually i mean 50 years can go by and there will only be people like you and me who are still here who are like self-conscious about commentating on new melee videos at age 70 but we're just like we still love the game still love yeah. it. yeah and crts are going to be around for decades still like there's still millions and millions of crts out there and people are taking a lot of people are taking good care of the ones that they do have um like i personally own uh three crts myself so well. yeah <laughs> two of them are, are smaller pvms but i then i have like a regular size big one so yeah you need the you need you need a you need a you need a chunky one one that actually has actual viewable screen on it because the 12 right. inches are let me tell you <laughs> yeah, like, oh, really this is annoying. I have, the, the pvms i have are like are, are like eight and nine inches so like you basically can't play doubles on them they're they're perfectly serviceable for singles but um yeah um yeah here ne let me go back to my list here next well next is actually bsm so um i'm not actually not sure who that is uh bottom of the smash mountain <laughs> this guy <laughs> no, i'm just kidding yeah uh, bottom of the smash mountain i mean anyone who's watching this is already aware um you're producing i think the most frequent uh melee podcast content which is awesome um you, you're getting like all sorts of guests too like the the bigger melee podcasts like say radio melee with golden guardians or waiting for game with melee stats they're they're only getting like big dogs on on their uh on their um guests these days so like meanwhile you're out here getting folks like me 
and people like Hada, people like uh, I don't know, like just any, anyone, anyone who wants to talk about melee, which is awesome. So definitely big shout out to you for for doing that. Giving I, people I opportunity. always like to say that anyone who comes onto my podcast deserves to go on radio melee or waiting for game. But obviously, the uh, you know we live in a meritocracy. Uh, you're <laughs> if you're not a good player, you know you just don't get as much attention. So I'm not a good player, so who wants to be on the podcast? The answer is not always the big dogs and the big fish so the other reason why i could try hard and actually get people like zane on but i mm -hmm. i actually focus 99 percent of my efforts of getting on people like you seal because it's so important to me that everybody has a chance to be able to talk about their story in melee and i think there's almost in a way that you you get at the end of this People who come onto the podcast usually say that they had a good time and they said, I didn't know this, but this is actually really good for me in a weird way. Like it just, I've been able to like kind of just get out thoughts that I've had about the game because most people who come on are not regular content creators. So they don't usually express themselves in terms of saying, uh, this is, this is me, this is who I am as a, as a melee player. And this is my story. I do have a lot of streamers, content creators and the such seal. You're a player as well on top of doing everything else mm -hmm. that you do. So like there's, there's, there's definitely people doing stuff. I'm not trying to say that they're just sitting at home waiting for me to contact them, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to, for episode 200, we're at, this is a, a episode 170 or something. That'll probably Ooh. be the next time that I'm trying to get somebody big. And I am working yeah. on it even now, but it is tough. I will tell you when yeah. we're done, when we're done officially recording, I have a story to tell you. So we'll just do that oh. at that point. But we, nice. um, we, uh, for, for BSM pod, uh, yes, I am very happy that you correctly pointed out. I produce the most podcasts a week, even if they're not the most viewed. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you move on though. Fair enough. I mean, the, the people who do, who do appreciate them definitely appreciate them a lot. And I mean, I already know I'm going to share this with a bunch of my friends, so <laughs> that, that's big for me. Um, yeah, so the next person I see here is uh, Wasabi, who actually has not uploaded in a long time. It's been I like know. a whole year. I know, that was so sad. Yeah, yeah. welcome Wasabi. to Melee. Was the, looks like the last video Wasabi posted, but um, definitely uh, awesome channel as well. Um, after that, David V. Kimball, mm -hmm. he's out here. He is, he is also producing like such well put together video videos. I mean, he had the whole hour long documentary elevated about Melee's development, which I know a lot of people find really interesting. I, I never cared that much about like the like development part of it, but I watched that whole video. It was phenomenal. Um, he also makes these super, super cool videos where it's like, what if this character was in Melee and where he just has like a, like a, a mod that someone created. I, I don't know if he created them or if someone else did. Where Somebody else the model did, in. yeah. He, he sort but of collaborates like, with modders for Melee. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'll make a trailer style of like revealing the new character in Melee. Yeah. And he had this other video recently. It's like, what if Melee had six more months of development? Since Melee was, uh, a, I guess, a, what you call a rushed game since yeah. it was 13 months. And some of the ideas he had in there, I was like, wow, that would be so cool. Like. I, I definitely recommend checking out his channel. Or what um, if Melee think... had less development time? That video was oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. so cursed. <laughs> yeah. Like, you gotta cut stuff. Oh, man. Um, he also, I think, runs that website blippy.gg, which is like a, so, um, a so phenomenal huge. hub for, it's a great yeah, website. for finding anything you need for Melee. So huge shout out to him. Um, oh, man. Okay, this one, actually, I, I'm going to be sad to talk about because... Uh, Hasn't uploaded in a long time either. But next is uh, Darwin Ding. I absolutely love Darwin Ding's videos. They're they're so all so entertaining. Every time I watch one, he there would be at least one thing he he would say in the video where I was like, yes, dude, yes, I I agree so much with what you're saying. Like you put it into words beautifully. Um, and and like he had a pretty small channel too. Was, uh, right now it looks like he's just under three thousand subs. Um, and he hasn't uploaded since he made that uh, video about um, Mango holding the ledge against Zane. That like oh, that was so annoying. Like people were just like arguing about it, and it's just like, dude, like just well, let the man make his video. And I mean, okay, so we were talking about Drug Fox earlier, who is still a good yeah. player and is a great melee coach, but had some things to say about it on Twitter, and mm -hmm. people 
you know, do what Twitter do best. So that was the last video that Darwin Ding made. And I yep. had him on the podcast a little bit before he did that. So when people mm. were sort of dragging him, I was like, I will go to war, Darwin. I, if you want me to do this, I will do it. He said, no, you can back off. I'm good. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. So I would be right there with you. Otherwise, also, I was he... like, I was like ready to like post all over Twitter. Be like, you guys need to shut up. Darwin yeah. Ding is the best video content creator we have <laughs> at this very specific moment in time. Because like you said, um, uh, Patty shared Darwin Ding stuff with me when he was like three videos in or something. I was, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. If Darwin Ding keeps doing this, it's going to pop off and keeps telling me every time I ask him, I'll ask him maybe once or twice in the past like six months. Hey, so, um, are you going to, are you going to come back or are you going to make more stuff? Yeah. And Darwin's like, yeah, soon. Uh, you know, I try not <gasps> to did? put a lot of pressure <laughs> on him, excited. but yeah, there hasn't been I one mean, yet. He, he was always, uh, like I would comment on his videos and he always like replied to them with such nice things like he would be like i would say like oh it makes me so happy to watch your videos like thanks for posting He'd be like it makes me so happy to see your comments and i'm like dude what do you mean i'm just saying i'm just saying i like your video but that, that always made me smile um he's he's super nice i was um, happy for I, like I an hour after channels. you commented on commented on one of my videos oh, yeah. so like you're the person who people want to see in your comments <laughs> Oh, that's 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 a good feeling. That's good to know. Um, but I love small YouTube channels. Like, there's so much soul there compared to like the these like big hundred k, even like these these million subscriber ones. Honestly, most of what I watch on YouTube is from smaller creators. Um, so definitely shout out to the, the smaller creators. To um, get in see. the direction of of closing up, I have to cut you off there. Okay, sure. I wanted to talk about Hold That L7 because I think yes. that a lot of things for you came together in certain ways. I don't know your story during the pandemic. I just know that mm -hmm. there have been so many ups and downs. And for for Chicago, this being one of Unsure's last big events that Unsure is running I love mm -hmm. the idea of hearing you talk about what the what this particular event meant for you because these are hopefully hopefully this event was something for you where you knew everybody that was there you were having great games you're having great conversations you're feeling more connected to the community than ever especially with saying wow we can actually all be in the same room and not immediately be worried that it's a bad idea of course the pandemic is still ongoing but doing it safely, gathering together safely, and just being all involved in Melee, and then commentating all of Top 8 with Larfin, not just the first half or the back half, the whole thing. And I'm just really curious to hear your actual perspective because I'm just trying to fill in all of your thoughts for you. Please tell me how it was for you, Seal. Oh, yeah, you, you definitely did a great job uh, like talking about a lot of the things that I felt. I Definitely one of the coolest things about Hold That L was like walking in the room um just uh seeing so many people i knew like i i think i knew over 50 percent of the people that were there um which was awesome even people from like vastly different regions like there's people from minnesota there who i knew or people from indiana a ton of people from wisconsin obviously illinois um so yeah like that that was amazing it's also one of my favorite parts of uh attending a tournament is when you walk in and people greet you because it just makes me feel like oh yeah it's like people value me being here they're, they're glad to see me i'm a part of the community um yeah shout out to books he, he's always one of the people who does that the most like books is a uh wisconsin player who i believe all that was actually the last tournament he's going to be competing in so uh shout out to him for that he's going to be helping run invincible in madison next month which is going to be awesome i will be attending that um, um but yeah shout out to him he's, he's always very uh happy to see me when I walk in, which is a good feeling. Um, so yeah, hold that L. That, that was that was cool just to know so many people there. Um, I did also help seed the event with um, Unsure and Pleba, and Dark Gen X helped a little bit as well. Um, and let me think, where should I begin, I guess? Bes besides like seeing a ton of people, there were a couple of people who I had known online that I was just meeting for the first time there, like uh, Three Hana, shout out to him. Um, some other people who I had briefly met, but not got to spend much time with, like Latin and Blue from Indiana. Um, 
And some people I hadn't seen in a while, like friends from Madison, like uh, Squizzage or Lord English. Um, so definitely shout out to all the people that were there. Um, it's great to see you. And yeah, when it comes to the bracket, um, the bracket was uh, pretty good. It wasn't super notable for me. Um, I I played uh, Kuyashi on the stream and I lost 2-0. Um, I only played okay in that set. I didn't play very poorly or especially well, um, but I think I just got like two stock twice. Um, but after that, I... Uh, oh, actually, after that, I played someone who I met on Unranked, which was pretty neat. Um, it, his tag is uh, Frumentary. He's ranked in Northeast Ohio and plays Falco. Um, I met him on Unranked. Then uh, I, like... He actually invited me to his Discord server after, which was very nice of him. So shout out to Frumentary. Um, I, I did end up beating him at Hold That L, and then I advanced to top 64 loser side, where, funnily enough, I had to play Larfin. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and Larfin is another Sheik player, of course. He's also from Chicago, and he is slightly better than me, in my opinion, at least. I, Maybe, I don't know, maybe some people, if they're SEAL fans, might disagree, but I think Larfin's better than me. Um, For now. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, been, he's been ranked before. He's, I don't think he currently is, but he's been ranked here before. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of him, as well as a friend, so I, I wouldn't be upset at all if even everyone said Larfin's better than me. <laughs> um, but we did play, and we had a really close set. It was actually last stock game five. Can't call it last hit, though, since I think he was at zero. But uh, he did defeat me last stock game five. So I was out at 49th, which was funny. <laughs> I actually tweeted about this. Um, since I placed 49th at Genesis, which was like my greatest achievement in melee competition of all time, and then I placed 49th at Hold That Out, I just like a, a thorough analysis has proven that they're equally difficult tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I did okay in the bracket there. I don't didn't do especially well or especially poorly. I was just uh, like, okay, that was a that was a bracket that I played in, um, which is how it goes sometimes. I mean, not every tournament's going to be a great a great bracket run or a heartbreak. Um, sometimes you just do okay. And um, let me see what else. I guess after that, oh, I, I helped with reporting a ton of sets. Um, I, I had like the admin power on my phone, so I would just walk around and and like ask people their game count once they finished a the set, so I could report it and then let them know who they had to play. So I was doing a little bit of toing just to help out. Um, and after that, it was just commentary, I guess. So I actually commentated the end of Hold That L six with Larfin as well. I do think that was just top four though. I don't think that was the whole top eight. So I think it was like second half of top eight that we did. Um, where I commentated uh, Ginger winning. And then this time we did the whole top eight, which was super cool. Um, I've done a couple regional top eights now, like I did the uh, Minnesota monthly, the second Minnesota monthly melee top eight with Zen, um, another Sheik main. I feel like a lot of Sheik mains do commentary, <laughs> just as an aside. <laughs> um, yeah, so Zen and I, Zen and I commentated that, and of of course I've done top eight at Invincible a lot. That's the that's the Madison, Wisconsin tournament, um, and um, I guess that that's it, mostly it for regionals. But uh, oh, and I commentated top eight at uh, Bot Meet in Indiana. So I've been doing a lot of Midwest regional top eights, which is awesome. Um, but Hold That L is maybe the biggest one yet. Um, I forget how big Hold That L6 was. Well, I guess it has to be bigger than Hold That L6, seeing as it was the biggest melee-only Chicago tournament. Um, but yeah, that, that was super cool. Larfin and I got to hold it down. We got to commentate a bunch of Sheik because both Ben and JFlex did excellent. They're yep. both in winner's semis. They both made winner's finals, and they were also in grands as well. So I, probably a majority of the sets we commentated had Sheik. Um, there's also some really fun sets as well. Scurzo made top eight, which was sick because he's number one in Chicago, uh, the whole hometown hero. Um, Zamu, also uh, beloved around here, even though he's from Champaign, Illinois, not quite Chicago, um, but we still still love him as well. Had a really big loser's run at that event. He did, yeah. yeah. He lost to no fluxes in winner's round one of top 64, and then he beat a ton of really good players. 
um, to make it all the way to third. So right. huge shout out to Zam. That guy's amazing. Um, but yeah, Ben ended up taking it home. JFlex got the best of him in winner's finals, but uh, Ben found his mojo and won, I believe, 6-1. Yeah, in, uh, it was it was three one in the first set and three zero in the yeah. second set, and right. it was you pointed this out when you and Larfin were watching them play in grands. Mm -hmm. uh, that you were like, I feel like Ben really only started to turn it on in losers finals, and then when you interviewed mm -hmm. him afterwards, Ben agreed. He was, he was like, yeah. I, I started to feel like I was actually playing well <laughs> in losers finals of a big tournament, yeah. which I thought was great. It was, uh, I feel like a lot of players don't play their best. They don't play their best at the end of a tournament. It's it's um it's hard to have a one day tournament, go through an entire bracket of that size, and then have your best melee at the, ready to go at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But it just worked out great for 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 Ben, and it was it was fun to watch. You would you and Larfin would just call out what's going to happen during the punish sequences, <laughs> and it yeah, was fun. Was... It's just fun. You would laugh at yourselves, but you would just go and and this is it. And it, yep, just like I said. Yeah. We're great commentators. I remember specifically, there was a funny moment on Fountain. He like grabbed him below the platform, and then I was like, wave land, re grab, and then it was like run off forward air, and that's exactly that happened. And I was like, yeah, like you and I both knew that was coming. We've both seen this happen before. Um, it's what I forget who, but there's there's one commentator that just like calls it like the cut scene or whatever. <laughs> it's like you just, it's already over once you got grabbed there. Um, but yeah, that was sick. Huge shout out to Ben. He is unbelievably good at the game. He, he No one can beat him in the Midwest in 2022. Um, Ginger did take the last hold that L over him, but Ben defeated Ginger at the first Minnesota. The last hold that L, of course, was in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, but in yes. 2022, Ben defeated Ginger at uh, the first Minnesota monthly, um, defeated um also, other people there like Zamu and uh, Crudo were there, and then the the next one had uh, Slow King and um, Wally also who posed the challenge to him, um, and then Ben won this tournament as well. So like he he seems unbeatable in the Midwest right now. You just um, need to get Ginger to... back in, and uh, yeah, you know shout out to shot. Ginger, even though not entering a lot of events. We know how good Ginger is. Oh yeah, I mean he won the function. That's yeah. a massive event. That's one of the biggest events of the of the year. Had 200 people, and like 100 of them were all like top level players. <laughs> yeah. that, that tournament was was like, oh my god! You look at the pools, and you're like, this person is not seated to make top 64. Like, are you kidding me? There, there's like no, there's like no low level players at that tournament. I was like, where are they? <laughs> like everyone here is actually amazing. <laughs> oh man, that was a crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> But yeah, huge shout out to Ben. He he's also a friend and inspiration of mine as a as a chic player. Um, but yeah, hold that L. It was a very cool tournament, and also like how it was um, on Shur's last tournament before he takes a break. It's actually also my last uh, um, Chicago melee tournament as a as a resident here because I will be moving to Indiana um, in just about a month now. So. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be driving back up for hold that else. Like you're not you're not going to see a hold that L without me unless I'm busy or if I moved further away. I'm definitely going to make a drive up. But yeah, won't be be uh, living here and attending tournaments. Um, That's super. I can't sad. attend the locals here anyway, unfortunately, because of my work schedule. I can't go to mid lane. Um, but yeah. So where are you, uh, you're, when you move into Indiana, are you going to be mm -hmm. kind of close to blue? Because blue is also going to be moving to from uh, northeastern yes. Indiana to like closer to Indianapolis. So you're just going <clears> to <throat> uh, go to the same locals, maybe. We'll, we'll see, I yeah. guess. I'm, I'm definitely down to get destroyed by blue. Fox is the matchup I uh, need to work on the most. Even though I did beat two foxes at Genesis, um, <laughs> two like the last two people I beat, the two the two best wins I had at Genesis were fox players. But um, that's definitely the matchup I struggle in the most. Like I, uh, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's doable, but it's hard. I mean, I just need to watch more. I need to watch more JMook and Crudo. Those two are the ones like pushing that matchup so hard right now. Um, and and hopefully also Ben when he gets to play against uh, Fox oh, players yeah. uh, besides Zamu because I'm yeah. sure that's the most common Fox player that Ben will fight against in top eights. But 
we would talk mm-hmm. about your Genesis Top 64 in terms of mm-hmm. like how you felt about it and everything, but instead, I actually have a trivia game related to Genesis Ooh. 8 for you. You said that nice. you placed 49th. I'm interested in hearing I how did. many other people can you name who finished 49th without looking. Oh, oh, that shouldn't be too hard. I've looked at the bracket so many times. I think I think I could Wait, how many people even place 49? So, so, it's so 16, it's up I to think? you. It's up to you to to name all of them. I'm just going okay. to uh, keep score over here, and I'm going to okay. circle the ones that you name, and I'll let you know when you've hit all of them, or if you stop because you can't name anymore, and you yeah. haven't named all of them, I will show you on the React screen which ones you, which ones <laughs> you, uh, which ones you miss. But let's not let's not assume you're going to miss any right now. Yeah. Because I had a feeling that you were going to say you've checked out this bracket a lot. I would know I mean, how this yeah. bracket goes because I'd be like, man, if I finished top 64 out of Genesis, I'd be over the moon too. So I definitely yeah, get I, it. I look at the bracket like every day just to remind myself. I, I actually like, not not actually, but like um, for like maybe like two weeks after Genesis, at least one point in the day, I would just like think to myself, I'd be like, I'd be like, I got top 64 at Genesis. <laughs> I would like have an internal pop off over it. Like for literally, literally every day for like two weeks, I would just think about it and be like, yes, dude, I did that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so going, let, let's think. So 49th, these would have to be p- other people that started in Losers. The easiest one to name is a uh, good friend of mine, Ambi Sinister. The uh, I believe he was the second lowest seed. I was the lowest seed to make top 64 at like 269. Um, and I believe he was the second lowest at like 180 something. Um, he defeated Bonfire 10 and Toph to make it there. Two very, very good wins of his own. Um, and yeah, it was, it was wonderful to make it there alongside him. Um, let's see. Uh, there's also um, Greg Turbo. He was one of the other uh, surprise uh, top 64 people. Um, I, rem- I remember he had to play, uh, I think, Eddie Mexico. Yep. And he had to play a Luigi. Yeah. Yeah. So Eddie did not place 49th, but Greg Turbo did. So that's three counting myself. So there should be. Oh, yeah. Um, we should circle you as well. That's more. a good idea. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That'd be so <laughs> yeah. awkward if I'd like <laughs> on <laughs> the 16th technicality. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that, that's, there's three, so there should be 13 more. Um, Cliche got 33rd because he started in winners. Shout out to Cliche as well. He had an amazing run at Genesis. Um, Cliche da goat, no cap, as uh, SoCal would tell you. Or <laughs> Cliche, they, they call him Cliche. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he did not. Um, I think Fat Goku actually placed 49th because I think he had to play Mango. And mm, then correct. the winner of that played Cliche. And so Mango, so cliche, cliche to play like JMook into Mango in top 64, which yeah, is so tough. rough. That's tough. I mean, to make it to, to make it to top 48, like you're definitely going to end up losing to two Titans. Um, so let's see that, that would be then Fat Goku is the fourth one. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe the other lower, one of the lower seeds who's a surprise to make there was Dan's demand. Um, he's another chic player. I think he had to play. He he had to, I think he lost to a Jigglypuff. Yep. I'm trying to remember who it was though. Not S2J. Oh, SDJ. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he had to play SDJ. Yeah. So Dan's demand would be the fifth one. Yep. I'm sort of like thinking of the more su- the surprise players to make it into top 64 first. Um. Hmm. Oh. Uh. No, that might have been in winners. Actually, that could have been in losers. Shroomed, I'm saying shroomed because yep, I, I know Slow King beat him. Yeah, yep, Slow King. King. I, I yep. warmed up Slow King by the way, um, <laughs> and then Slow King beat Shroomed. And I, he was warming me up for Rom, who defeated me. Um, but no, no shade on uh, on Slow King for that one. Um, and huge, huge congrats on the win on Shroom. That's a good one. Um, let me think. Oh, Shabo also plays 49th. Mm-hmm. The reason I know that is because uh. Chicago Melee, the Twitter account, posted a tweet of how Chicago players fared, and it was only me and him that made top 64, which was crazy. Um, that is crazy. So, yeah, so that would be six. There's ten more. Jeez, actually, this is, this is harder than I... We're, uh, we're starting man. to get into the sauce now. Yeah, this is, this is getting tough. Um, 
I would see if I had more time to prepare, I would prepare super sexy questions that are like, uh, like this, this player from this area who's famous for this pop off here or doing this thing yeah. there, like, you know, the melee stats style questions yeah. that are always so eloquently written and put <laughs> for the, you know, who wants to be millionaire or the jeopardy questions. Big shouts to Melee yeah. Stats for making those things because oh, for sure. that takes for so sure. much work to not only get the data, but also like I'm doing the lame version, which is how many how many people can you date who finish who finished 49th yeah. the same placing as you seal? I think I think I've remembered a couple more. Um so I do remember I think Stiv, who is, is currently I think third in Oregon, mm -hmm. did make it there. And I'm pretty sure he lost to Chewed at yep. who then defeated Ben in that set that i don't want to talk about and then lost to zamu um but yeah stiv had a, had a good run he's he's been on the come up he's third i think in oregon right now below aura and fat goku um um stiv did um i think john wick as well from arizona because yep. i remember he beat he defeated sora or i guess just joshman now as of this week he's, there's no more sora there's only joshman um <laughs> Well, yeah. Josh Man Josh and Josh and Josh right. and Lil Trick As a person. Yeah, yeah. He's got too many names. Um, but yeah, because I remember he got 65th and I remember being like, it's messed up that I outplaced him. Like, I mean, that is just how brackets go sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he had, a, he had a tougher one. But but you're yeah, John the better Wick. player right now, probably. No. <laughs> I'm not even going to I'm not even going to let that one go. Do you it's think that do you think that Josh Man would have placed 49th at hold that L7? Who's to say? But that no, was just as hard of a bracket. Yeah, no. Oh, that's true. It was equally hard. <laughs> equally hard. Yeah. So he probably would have got 65th then. But yeah, um, <laughs> for, to John Wick uh, credit, lost uh, game five to Ralph. Oh, did Ralph went Pikachu then, right? I do not know because I'm looking at Microsoft Paint. Oh, okay. That's how I'm circling. I bet these. Ralph went Pikachu because Ralph Ralph is like uh, Ralph is like one of those players who was like on the low end of top 100 year after year, um, and he just started playing Pikachu randomly. So like, actually, oh, wait, maybe it's kind of foolish to go Pikachu against the guy from Arizona. I don't know. Either way, uh, Ralph Ralph's a great player. Um, who else? Um, oh, didn't CPU Zero get 49th? Did he lose to Dreffen, I'm pretty sure? Or maybe that was around later. I can't. I know I watched their set. Because CPU Dreffen... Zero did indeed finish 49th, losing oh, to yes, Dreffen. Oh, yes, and he lost to Dreffen. Okay, I watched the set on YouTube because um, they actually uploaded all the Slippy replays into sets, which was so cool. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, so mine, my set with ROM is on YouTube and with the top 64 on it, so I can go back and watch that. Mm -hmm. um, they did it like a couple months. like It was like maybe one month ago when they did that. Yeah, um, I'm sure that takes time to actually go through all that yeah. because you have to, like, they're just game files. It's not like they have player names automatically mm -hmm. attached to them when the recordings are made. Yeah. You have to really sort through everything properly. Mm-hmm um i'm at like nine now geez there's still seven more or am i at nine or ten <laughs> let's see you got one two three four five six more to go six more to oh, go i'm at ten okay yep um hmm i think there is a one of the west coast marths i'm pretty sure was it is it Typhoon, I'm pretty sure? Typhoon from Oregon or Washington? I think he also made it. Yep, lost 3-0 to Slug. Oh, geez. Okay, that's tough. Yeah, Slug, Slug is very good against Marth and Sheik, too. Like, I think after that, he probably beat, like... I think there, his Slug's run, if... Maybe there's one other person before that or after Typhoon, but I think after that, he beat Spark, Prudo, and Fizzwiggle in, in some order. So he just, like... And he just null. shredded all the sheiks. Okay, so null, and then he beat the three sheiks in a row. So it was uh, slug over typhoon, then slug over fizzwiggle, slug over oh, null, okay. slug over spark, slug over crudo in a game and five. And then lost a lot. And then lost yeah. a lot. You know. Okay, yeah. It's, he had, it's... he had, he uh, he was the sheik shredder that weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay, so there's five more. Well, I I feel good. I've at least gotten. Uh, over two thirds. If I'm you've made it pretty far, yeah. Um, 
feel like the rest of them are all like good players that just had to play someone really good. Because I don't remember anyone else who I was like, oh, like that's that's super cool that they made top 64 or that they got 49. Unless I am forgetting someone, in which case I, I would feel bad. But um, I might need to I might need to fish for some hints at this point. OK, about... so let's let's call a friend. We got no, I don't have any friends for you to call. So <laughs> we, this is the part where, again, I should have prepared more for this. Next time we get you on, I'm going to make it like an official segment out of it or something. We'll have like oh, Andy yeah, ready, sick. just ready for me to call and then we'll call him and then he'll go, oh, right. I'm really busy right now. I'll try again later. <laughs> yeah. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Okay. So Eddie Mexico was not the only player in top 64 losers side from Mexico. There's another player who finished 49th that came out of Mexico. Oh, okay. Well, that that's probably got to be Bimbo then, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. Because I didn't, I don't remember any of the other like top Mexico players. I guess it could have been Far, but actually, I don't remember Far attending Genesis. Far, Far and so. Bimbo are like the other ones I would expect to make it there. Um, there's other amazing players too, like Pantera and uh, and um, I'm blanking, but there's there are a ton of other good players um, who just like don't travel. Uh, Oh, of course, you have like Aza, you have Javi, et cetera. But I, th those people don't really travel these days. Um, and yeah, then I, I know that Super okay. Quack is not necessarily on everybody's oh, radar yeah. as a really good uh, Mexican player, player out of... Uh, uh, what's that city called? It's a combination of Mexico and California, but I always get it wrong. Mexicali or something. Oh, anyway. Mexicali, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. I will give you a, another hint. There is... I believe this player is also a Marth player because Marth. I recall this person being a Marth player. So let me look it up real quick just to be super duper sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. Falco player, according to Liquipedia. Falco. But lost hmm. to the Swooper to finish 49th. This player lost to the Swooper. That's swooped on. Yep. I don't even remember Swooper's run at Genesis, actually. Uh, after beating this player, Swooper went on to play Salt next and lost 3-1 to Salt. Okay. Yeah, because Salt ended up being taken out of the tournament by Plop yep. in a reverse 3-0. Yep. Um, really unfortunate, so yeah, by I the way. <laughs> I, I wasn't really too rooting for Salt it. there, I'll be honest. I I'll say it. I mean, I, I think Salt's sick, but I'm not going to root against No, Plop. I know you're not going to root against Salt. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure I was in the front row, and I was probably like, yes, yes, shine spike him, yes. <laughs> well, after winning one game as Fox, didn't Plup go back to Sheik? He did go, he did go back to Sheik on Greenland. I was Greenland. like, boo, you're trying to confuse Salt because he's playing, the, <laughs> he's playing the player, and now you're really messing it up. Boo. Yeah. But, you know, Plup is... Yeah, anyway, shout out to Salt. That, that guy's... Like, he's inches away from breaking through. He took Leffen to game five. He took Jmook to game five. I'm pretty sure Jmook at least. But he definitely took Klopp to game five. Didn't, so like, no, Salt took Zane to game five, if I recall correctly. Zane, that's right. He yeah. took Zane to game five. Or maybe, was, I think it was Mech that took Jmook to game five. I think so, yeah, yeah because Jmook had to reverse 3-0, I think, at, at yeah. Summit 13. Yeah. But uh, Any, anyway, Salt we can come back. Incredible. We can come back to who the Swooper yeah. beat because I want you to try to get as far as possible. Yeah, the Falco player. Um, there um, is. There is also. <sighs> this is too obvious of a hint, but I don't know how to make it more vague. There's a Mango's friend who finished 49th. Well, it wasn't Null because Null beat Ambi. Null's the one that took out Ambi at 49th. So, and also we already discussed Null did lose to Slug. Um, it's not Kadoran. Kadoran ended up making it to ninth place and lost. Actually, I think either got three out or reverse three out by Kalamazoo um, for ninth. Um, uh, well, for the I record, that Kalamazoo leaves... three out Kadoran. Three out. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember if it was three out or reverse, but um, yeah. And I don't think it was. Um... Well, it's just got to be lucky, right? Yep. I don't really remember his performance, which is consistent with if he plays 49th, I would be like, okay, like that can happen. Like, I, I'm not like shocked to the core if he places 49th. It can just happen. And then in this next set, 
This player, who I always get confused of whether or not they mod a controller or not, lost a game five to Zuppy to place 49. Oh, yeah. Gooms, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, Gooms is a big controller modder. He he and he and Gumi actually both work on the, the Goom Wave, I believe, where Gumi produces like the software and the, the board itself. And Gooms actually he'll do like notching and, and stuff like that. And I think he might also work on software, but I know he I knew him as like a notch guy, first of all. So yeah, Goom I forgot he was one of the other people where it was like kind of a surprise that he made top sixty four. Not not like a huge surprise, he's an excellent player, but um, it was like kind of it was like oh like that that's something where you you'd see him and you go oh like good job like good job getting 49 that's that's a good performance and then in this next match you got moki 3 owing this player who oh. who is primarily known to be a teams player teams player okay moki yeah that it makes sense that i don't quite remember this since if you just have to play moki immediately this could definitely be a very good player who Make, who placing 49th would not be super shocking for me. Um, a teams player. Who does still play teams? <laughs> Definitely wasn't as fat. Um, PPU's not competing. Those are like the first two people you think of. Yes, of course. Uh, or like Armada, M2K, Android. Um, um, let's see. Oh, Ralph, also a huge teams player. But we already Ralph discussed Hazel. Ralph. Oh, was it? Um, it could be Rocky too. Rocky's big on teams. Azel, Rocky Azel. Um, yeah, Rocky and Azel are people who are who I'm starting to think of. So how, how did was so Rocky? You, when you're ready to place Rocky's your final me. answer, you can just let me know. Yeah, a teams player and got three would by Moki. I could definitely see. I could definitely see Azel and Rocky get 3 0 by Moki. Like, I could also see them take a game or even win, honestly. They're, they're both excellent players. Uh, hmm. I think I'll go with... I don't remember Rocky being there. I think I'm going to go with Azel. Although... I don't know if Azel was there either. <laughs> but it's probably just because Azzle. they placed 49. Azel was there at the tournament, actually finished at, at the 25th or something to that effect, oh, losing 3-1 okay. to Salt. So it is not Azel mm, who finished Azzle. 49th, but it was actually Dark Atma who finished 49th. Dark 49th. Atma! Oh, I feel bad for forgetting Dark Atma. <laughs> the, the Peach Sheik uh, dual main. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he is a teams guy. I guess he just wasn't one of the first people that comes to mind. Yeah. And uh, he also teams with Rocky and, and Ralph and stuff too. Yeah, teams with Ralph at Genesis 8. Um, what's yeah. really interesting is that the Genesis 8 was the last event that's listed on Lycopedia for Dark Atma, but has mm -hmm. been attending events since 2008, which is awesome. That's yeah, really cool. he's, been, he's been around for a very long time. That's if really I remember cool. correctly, he was originally... Um, he was originally Midwest. I think I think he's from Missouri originally, but I'm not 100% sure. I may be confusing him with someone else. Um, but yeah, Dark Atma, very, very solid player. All right, um, I'm now ready to reveal to you the last person. Uh, we're going to go to the new screen of looking at stuff. I need to add window okay, capture. So I missed, I missed two then. Falco player. There's I'll Dark Atma. What does that say? Oh, okay, so it's probably two oh, pixels. Logos, that's right. <laughs> ah man, he he had like uh, he took a game. I think he took game one off Zane, and people were talking about it in winners. Um, yeah, I definitely forgot. Ice getting through by, by Swooper is not the most memorable way to go out. But I would say you got to like twelve or so without help, or. 11 without help. Yeah, 11 with no help, and then three more with the, with the hand. And so I would say this was a really good uh, exercise for you, and if I add a little bit more flair, could have really, really taken off. It would have been awesome to see you go 16 for 16, because I think if we made it more of a game, you would have, an you would have gone into gamer mode. <laughs> I believe yeah. it. I believe.
But that is all that I had for you. We're obviously at over an hour, so we're good to go there. <laughs> and I don't have any patron questions for you, sadly. You know, I was tempted <laughs> I was tempted to go onto the Melee Stats patron channel and be like, <laughs> anybody got any questions for Seal? <laughs> uh, I'm sure you would get some there. I didn't want to. I'm new to this to the patron side of Melee Stats. I lost a bet to Edwin this weekend. I, I said, got you. <laughs> well, no, okay. I came to him with this bet. I didn't want him to dictate the bet to me. I wanted to dictate mm -hmm. it to him. And so since AMSA was seated fourth, I thought, oh, that'll be fun because if AMSA gets fourth or higher, I'll be happy because I love seeing AMSA play well. And if he doesn't, then Edwin or somebody from Melee Stats will be a patron of my podcast. So I was like, this is good. This Ooh. is a good bet. So I messaged him and I said, Edwin, I bet you that if AMSA misses top four, then you become a patron of my podcast, or if he makes top four, I became a patron of your podcast. And so it worked out that Amsa got exactly fourth at yeah. Battle BC4. I was not mad because I knew that I was eventually going to become a patron of Melee Stats anyway. <laughs> so I did not want to, in my first week in that channel, be like, hey, I'm going to use this as another place to farm interactions <laughs> for my own podcast. I already feel bad enough. enough. I already feel bad enough posting all of my shells in the shell channel on a good, more dude. than a weekly <laughs> basis. Cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making mediocre to good podcasts on a fairly <laughs> regular basis. So that is all that I had though. Like I said, so how about, how about any last thoughts that you would like to add something that you think we missed? Just uh, start to wrap us up with thoughts that you have and also to tell the people where they can find you. Hmm. I haven't thought of any closing thoughts, so maybe I'll think about that while I do the second part first. Um, I don't really have too much to plug right now. I mean, I, I do have my Twitter, which is uh, SSB underscore seal. You can see it on the, the little purple thing on the, to the left of me here. Um, and yeah, I mean, I have a YouTube channel, but I'm not like a content guy. I do post videos there sometimes where it's it's usually just like tournament sets either um i re like recorded on my phone the top uh right three of you are doing your part breaker. you are doing your yeah, part <laughs> exactly to preserve the those tournaments without a stream um i think also i'd like the first construct back after the uh um the first construct back from the pandemic um and then I also had uploaded like I, I, I put together uh, like all the slippy replays for net play tournaments that I entered, but I'm not a I'm not a net play tournament enter. I just entered like the regional one that was going on and now I can't even enter it even if I want to because it's on Mondays. So can't can't do that because of work. Uh, so yeah, I do have that YouTube. Um, I also have a Twitch, which I don't think I've streamed on in over a year and a half now, which is kind of a shame because I definitely do like streaming. Um, it's also everything I have is SSB underscore seal. But I guess that's all I really need to say. Like if you <laughs> if you want to find me on any platform, you just look up SSB underscore seal. Now that, that if you see SSB underscore seal, it doesn't mean it's me. I have had I've had someone uh, like do an imposter or whatever, like be an imposter of me before on YouTube. I don't know why they did that, but that's someone did that one time. Yeah, it was very random. Uh, channel got taken down after I just asked people to report it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so I must just be underscore seal on everything. Uh, and I guess in terms of closing thoughts, um, hmm. oh man, I should have thought of something. I, I guess I could just say like, oh, be here nice we go. Here to we content go. creators. Here we go. Yeah, be be nice to content creators because they're they're putting in a lot of work that you probably don't know about just to make entertaining videos. Um, and they're probably not getting at least in melee, like they're probably not getting very much return from it. Uh, so, like, just just uh, be nice to them. Like, don't don't leave mean comments that are saying like this sucks, blah blah blah. Just uh, like you don't even have to be nice, but just don't be mean. <laughs> um and if you do like if you do like stuff that people make then just like let them know post the post a comment saying like i i enjoyed this video this is great uh keep it up um i liked this about it give them some feedback so 
yeah, just just be nice to content creators. Also, uh, go to go to your locals if you like melee, and you're not going to your locals, and and you're able to, of course. Like I I can't go to my local because it's that's on a night where I'm working late. Um, but if you can, please do because that's that's the reason why we why we're all here. I mean, majors are great and all, but it, you got to be a part of the local scene too. It's it's important. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So yeah, be be nice to content creators and go to your locals. <laughs> yeah, so for me, I will big screen myself for the people who are still watching. Sorry for the ones who are listening. You don't know that I'm big screening right now, but I will big screen myself <laughs> to once again make people aware of the fact that we have a very, very prestigious member of this community in Chillin who recently had a stroke and is going to have a long recovery process, including open heart surgery in the near future. And there's a GoFundMe set up. You'll find that in the description of this podcast or video, if you're watching on YouTube, where you can go and donate because all of the effort that has gone into that so far has been really amazing to see. I love seeing the Melee community and the community around gaming in general, because Chillin is someone that a lot of people know just by the documentary, just by the Salty Suite, and being someone who has been a consistent presence in at, at these big tournaments where you see commentators, sometimes chilling, commentating some of the greatest sets that we've ever seen from Melee. So if you have the means, please support that. And that's all I'll say. I, I already talked about the fact that I have social media platforms and a patron and stuff. I, I just want to, for the next, at least the next couple of podcasts more, continue to say, Go support the GoFundMe for Chillin' and anything that you could give to that will really, really help him and the people around him, his family, his friends, to be able to support him and get him the best care possible to continue to recovery, recover, excuse me, so that we can have Chillin' for a, 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 such a long time because it, this sort of thing, you just never, you never expect it to happen and Chillin' has a long time ahead. There's more Chillin' for us to to see I guess is the best way to put it. I'm excited to see where the tournament that's running this weekend under Chillin's Twitch channel that's being run by the Rollback Rumble team. You can check that out. I'll put the link to his Twitch in the description of this as well. If anyone listens to this before the end of tomorrow night, Saturday night, there's going to be a big tournament tomorrow night on the West Coast and the East Coast online brackets. Again, just to raise support and attention and awareness to Chillin's GoFundMe on his Twitch, being run by the Rollback Rumble team. So shout-outs to Jade and Brandon and everybody else on that team and for the Melee community to rally around one of our more beloved community members. So you can check all that out in the description of the video for the podcast. And that's all I got. So or did you come up with any big thoughts other than the, oh, no, you did the whole thing about going to locals and supporting the community around you. That's so cool for you to say that, Seal. So as I was saying that, I remember that you said it. I feel bad now because you don't have to <laughs> say anything more. But why don't you just go ahead and say goodbye for us or, or thank you for joining us or something. I want you to have the last word this time. Okay, sure thing. Yeah, thank you guys all for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, me talking for both too long about my melee background like i don't i only got like the first half of it and only like probably 40 percent of the youtube channels that i wanted to mention but i mean we can't be here for three hours so that, that's uh i totally understand that I'll, I'll have to make my my own like list and publish that somewhere sometime um or come back on the podcast <laughs> yeah definitely i would be glad to do that yeah um thanks everyone who watched uh definitely hit that subscribe button support uh bottom of the smash mountain um jesse's out here doing a ton of stuff so it's awesome